fact, I saw someone quoted me on uh, Twitter. They quoted from my book of me quoting Rambo 3, where Colonel Trotman says to the KGB officer, if you read your history, you'd know these people would rather die than be slaves to an invading army. They like to fight the Pashtuns, and they got the mountaintops, and you don't, and that's it. I could have told you that, Danny, years before you ever showed up there. And now you got even the people who are calling it quits are saying, hey, not that it's anybody's fault or anything, because how could anyone have known that we're not going to be able to pacify this land of tribal warriors the size of Texas in the middle of Eurasia on the other side of the earth from North America where we're from? How could anyone have believed in this for a minute? Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How about you? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah. Um... You got any uh, interesting banter to start off the podcast today? Huh? No, not a whole lot, man. No. Just kind of, you know, glad to be here recording a podcast with you. Yeah. I think we're going to. Wish have a- I could say the same. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Thought you'd find somebody better, right? <laughs> uh, no. Isn't that what they say in uh, Starship Troopers? Um, Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you have this job until you die or I find somebody better. Until I find somebody better. <laughs> <laughs> I um, like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, yeah, I don't really have any particular banter to, to go at. So did you listen to the last one? I did. I listened to it on the way. Well, actually, I say on the way over, but earlier today because I've done some driving around. I figured surely um, you would have some commentary on some um, part of that. I enjoyed it. Um, I mean, I... I I agree with a lot of what you, most of what you said, Mm -hmm. as far as, you know, like democracy sucks, man. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't say that. Uh, Not Um, not explicitly. (laughs) You insinuated at it pretty hard. Yeah, I I think my, the point that I was trying to make is that at least on the scale in which it's employed in this country, that democracy is just another form of control. It is. And, and you made a good point at one, at, at, some point through there about oh good i'm glad i made one well well <laughs> basically what you just said like democracy would be is fine like on a local level mm-hmm. like i think that's probably the best way to run like a city government and even like a county government yeah but um as far as a big federal government you just end up with the situation that we have now where half the country rules over the other half every four years and it's a fight to get there and even well, th- and even then you end up with, with the way at least we're structured is you have two sides that neither represent anybody really mm-hmm. i mean like yeah you do have some hardcore republicans Republicans and some hardcore Democrats, but neither of those are the majority of the country. Like, I mean, like really, like if you really start like talking like issues, start going down the line of issues with people, very few fall strictly into one category or the other. Yeah. Well, I I don't think that that problem is a problem of democracy, though. I think that problem is the problem of the power of government. Um, Just that we have concentrated power so much at the at, at that level. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think that you would have, I mean, for a long time, this country didn't have the issue of one side ruling over the other side. Yeah. Um, that has accumulated over time. Well, it's it, because the government has gotten so big. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you have a smaller government. I think you kind of do away with some of that, but it's one of those things like how you put the genie back in the bottle, you know? Yeah. I mean, once, I, once the gut, that's the thing, like government never, contracts it never gets smaller even if you have like the conservatives in there that are supposed to be small government guys mm-hmm. they never make the government smaller yeah um, the biggest increase in size of government in the history of the world probably was under george w bush yeah um and then again under obama and then again under trump, trump yeah. and again under biden i yeah. mean we'll see I, I i'm pretty sure that he's already made it again the biggest government in history, yeah. but uh, he ain't making um, it smaller. Well, that's, <laughs> like, that's certainly true. Um, yeah. yeah, I, I, I want to, I may have my numbers wrong here cause it's been a long time since I looked at, looked at this, but it, it seems to me that, um, at the turn of the 19th century, so in 1900, yeah. um, the U S government was something like between one and 2% of gross domestic product. Yeah. 
and that it's now like 40. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, take that for what it's yeah. worth, right? Like, yeah. something's changed here. Something's changed, yeah. definitely. Well, uh, I mean, the big news is um, we might, I'm still <laughs> like trying you're, to couch you're, you're here. You're skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> we might be actually leaving Afghanistan. Well, uh, there's good reason to be skeptical because um, Obama took us out of Iraq and then he took us right back in. No, he did. So. Yeah, yeah but that's basically because they kicked us out, right? The reason we left. Uh, I don't recall us them kicking us out that particular time. Maybe not. I, I may be, I may I, be confusing they, they the They tried times. to kick us out during the Trump years. Yeah, may, I may be confusing it yeah. with that. I don't actually remember. It seems like there was a kerfuffle about us not, well, yeah, about us leaving, but not being able to leave a residual force. Mm. Um, and But I think that was more on Obama than it was on the Iraqis, yeah. as I think back now. Well, maybe. And now, of course, that's being used as an excuse as to why we should stay in Afghanistan, because, you know, oh, well, if we hadn't left Iraq, ISIS wouldn't have risen up in Iraq and forced us to go back into Iraq. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, but ISIS wouldn't have risen up and gone into Iraq also if we hadn't funded them in Syria. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like maybe that would have been that that would have been nipping it in the bud a little closer, you know? Yeah. Um And we wouldn't be going in there fighting ISIS if we hadn't overthrew Saddam. <laughs> well, yeah. And tried to overthrow Assad. Yeah, right. Mm. <laughs> like this that that yeah. seems to be the theme here. <laughs> yeah. Um well we, were we really trying to overthrow anybody in particular in Afghanistan? No, um, we just we just didn't want the Taliban. I I'm still confused about the whole thing. You know how? Um, I don't really remember the justification other than going in for Osama bin Laden. But it it seems to me that they just um, made. Al Qaeda and the Taliban the same entity. They they conflated somehow. the two. And I remember because I was for going into Afghanistan. Like mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, we got to go get them. And I I was like uneducated on the subject at the time, but I was like, you know, yeah, we got to fight them over there, so we don't fight them over here. They attacked us. Yeah. But the a lot of that was the media conflict. Afghanis didn't. <laughs> well, see, but you didn't you didn't understand that though. Mm -hmm. Um because the media conflated the two. Like the Taliban and the and um Al Qaeda were basically the same as far as the media concerned yeah. was concerned. And so yeah, like your your standard Joe watching the news every night is going to be all for going into Afghanistan, just like I was, because mm -hmm. that's basically what the media is telling you. Yeah, you know, and and it wasn't till I mean I I picked up once we once we were going into Iraq, I was like whoa 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 like mm -hmm. this that's when I started like getting educated on it, and then mm -hmm. I was like yeah well this deal in Afghanistan ain't very good either. <laughs> like, yeah, we're fighting the wrong people here too. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I didn't know that initially, and the only reason I knew that at all was because I'd done some digging on my own. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think a lot of people fell under that camp. And I think a lot of people never fell out of that camp. Like they never yeah. went and done the research to figure it out, you know. Mm -hmm. So, well, I mean, it's understandable. I, like you're supposed to be able to trust your, the, the media, media, right? Yeah. But I mean, I, I think we've learned yeah. um, <laughs> since then. Well, some, some people have anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I Most, mean, we, I, we, I still, we still dropped bombs or fired rockets into Syria because of the gas attacks not that long ago. Yeah. And, and that was after we'd already been shown that the first time that we did that, that the gas <laughs> attacks weren't, didn't originate with the Assad government. So yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I guess there's still a lot of people out there though that believe whoever's, whoever the anchors are on the, yeah. Well, and for one networks. side or the other, I mean, it's a lot different now. Like, I mean, when, when in 2001, when all of this was going on, I mean, you, you didn't have, I mean, you had Fox news and you had MSM, but it was different then than it is now. Mm -hmm. Like everything's so much more polarized, but either side's going to give you bad information on the war. Like neither side's going to give you the real scoop on what's going on. Yeah. Um, well, um, let's talk about what's happening right now. Yeah. Right now. So uh, did you listen to Biden's um, address? I, I, I guess? caught some of it, but I don't think I listened to the whole thing. You uh, had said to, I had meant to pull it up and listen to it. It wasn't very it. long. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, once again, way to go, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I am 
sure that he is getting a lot of pressure from a lot of places not to leave Afghanistan. It is kind of amazing to me that that he's dug in and decided to do this because a mm. big thing, my big, my whole shtick with. Um, Biden has been, you know, like he's not really controlling the levers of power. He's not mm -hmm. really in control because, I mean, the man clearly has dementia. <laughs> but mm -hmm. even with dementia, we are not doctors, by the way. So. We are not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you, you see what you see, but mm -hmm. um, it, he still has because the, you're right. The opposition to this is just enormous, mm -hmm. and and he's persisted on doing it you know yeah it, which is uh, commendable mm -hmm. um but at the same time kind of shocking that he can fight the deep state this hard yeah. in his condition <laughs> yeah well I'm, I'm sure that he has some help on his side too but um you know there there's so many things to address about this but i was really i was really proud of biden the other day when he was saying um, you know, things could have been done better. Yeah, obviously. Um, but we're committed to leaving. We're leaving. We're done yeah. with this. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I didn't, I didn't really expect that. Of course, uh, until like our last troops are out of there and we have stayed out for a while. I'm yeah. I'm, you're still, still skeptical. Yeah. I'll have, I'll be, yeah. Um, I'll be skeptical about whether we actually stay out of there or not, yeah. but I, um, I didn't, I, when he came into office and he moved the timeline back, I thought, oh, this is going to be Kick one of those perpetual delays until yeah. we're just like, we even, we just stop talking about that. Yeah. Like, um, do you remember uh, when um, when Trump announced that he was going to release the Kennedy assassination oh, stuff? yeah. I remember. And when then, he said he was going to do that. <laughs> yeah. And then he was going to um, he was going to do it in six months because he he'd been advised that now wasn't the time or whatever, but it would be revisited in six months. And then have you heard another peep about it since it never then? Never happened. That was years ago. Yeah. Right. Never happened. That, that's more or less what I expected Afghanistan to be. And wasn't it be. due to be released? Yes. Because yeah, yeah. It, the time had came for it to right. to be released, and then yeah. Yeah, nah, they can't nah, have that information nah, out there. That, that can't happen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's what I expected with Afghanistan. We're we're just gonna we're gonna delay it. Okay. Okay, well, we'll revisit this again in a year, and then a year from now, we just wouldn't even talk about it. Yeah, it never even comes up again. Yeah, yeah. Um, I talked to uh, I talked to some veterans about how they were feeling about this, and I apparently it was a wide range of emotions about um, yeah. the withdrawal. Yeah. Uh, just like um, anger about how it was managed, and of course, there's like a whole lot of regret about. Well, you know, we we fought and died over there and for what? Yeah. Um, to address that concern, I would say it, it was never going to be for anything. Yeah. Like it didn't matter how long we were going to stay. It was never going to be for no. anything. But and, and it was, it's painfully obvious that that was like, as soon as we leave that the Taliban was taken back over. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, there was never any doubt. There shouldn't have ever been any doubt in anybody's mind about that. Yeah. Um, well, there's going to be some resistance. Um, there will be, I don't think they're there's gonna, already some resistance. I don't in, think, in I think places, that, but. I mean, the, the, They'll end up back in control again, but I think that their control over the country will be different this mm -hmm. time, yeah. just because times have changed, and that society has had a taste, uh, 20 years almost, of, you know, more Western lifestyle. Yeah, some parts of it anyway. Yeah. Um, and there's going to be a lot of resistance to going back to where they were were in 2001. Well, the, the Taliban so far has been um, at least in terms of their public statements, very gracious and conciliatory yeah. about this whole thing. And of course, part of the reason that they, they took over the country so quickly is because they've been making friends. Yeah. Um, they've been making deals with, with people in all these little provinces, um, that allowed them to take over the provinces without much of a fight. Yeah. Um, so they, they have done this in a, um, in a surprisingly diplomatic way. I yeah. think for the most part. And they have said, you know, now they keep falling back into Sharia law and they intend to, um, they're going back to that yeah. in, in one form or another. Yeah. Like it may not be the hardcore form, but well, it's, I mean, that's the thing is that they have made statements saying that, you know, um, women, um, uh, will be permitted to do more things within the confines of Sharia law and, yeah. and so yeah. forth. So they, they keep coming back to that, but it does seem to be 
a um, a less uh, strict interpretation, maybe going yeah. forward. Yeah. Uh, and who knows? We'll see. It, I mean, it may not be. I mean, yeah. I mean, that, that's uh, they have to be careful about it though, because they know that they know they, they don't want power. U.S. troops back. Well, they don't want U.S. troops troops back, but they don't want to. I mean, they don't want a civil war in their own country over this stuff. No, and, and they that's could, part of the reason. That's part of the thing that they've been saying is like we're we're done fighting. Yeah. Like this is this is how it is now. But yeah. we're we're done fighting. We don't want to. You yeah. know, they offer general amnesty. Yeah. Um, to people that fought for the the national government, the the government that we put in power, yeah. Um, and so it certainly people have been killed, um, because yeah. of their political affiliations. But yeah. it hasn't been like mass slaughter like you might have expected. Yeah, yeah. And um, not no. that I'm supporting the Taliban here. I I listened say, but... to their their press conference that they had. I guess it was earlier this week, and I was surprised. I like mm -hmm. I I didn't expect them to come out as a, I guess as soft against the opposition as they did. Yeah, and a lot of that could just be you know posturing till we leave. Mm -hmm. um, who knows? Like, time will tell. But I'll be interested to see what what Afghanistan looks like five years from now. Yeah, like well, I, me too. Um, and they have offered a. Uh, um, safe passage to all Americans going to the Kabul airport. And I yeah. mean, um, you know what I think is funny and, and, and these arguments about why we should be staying, yeah. uh, is the, there's the one that they say, well, um, you know, it's so low cost. Yeah. Right. And what they keep identifying, and this is, this is for the, the people out there that aren't, oh, don't keep, as close to tabs on these things. I mean, although I think that most people would probably know, but maybe not, um, that they keep saying, well, we haven't even lost a soldier in the last year. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah, but that was under a general ceasefire yeah. against Americans because we'd made a deal to leave. <laughs> right. Yeah. All of that will change once it's <laughs> that we're yeah, going to be here yeah, permanently. If it was clear that we were staying to fight, that, yeah. that would be different. Um, the other thing is uh, about the Afghan government, the Kabul government, uh, folding and running away as quickly as they had, uh, had Ashraf Ghani and all. Um, yeah. And there was a lot of talk about, well, there should have been a, a, you know, a better political deal um, that America should have organized between the Afghan national government and um, the Taliban. Well, the U.S. tried to do that, and the Afghan national government refused to uh, to participate in talks. Yeah, they they chose not to try and make a deal with the Taliban. Yeah, um, so it's their own fault. Kind of right? on them, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, but that is one thing that I'll admit that I was definitely wrong about. Like I, you know, we all said that that Afghanistan would fall to the Taliban. Yeah. Um, but I always said, well, except for probably like one little area around Kabul, yeah. I thought that Kabul would hang would on. Would hold, hold out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it definitely no. did not. It did not. Like, <laughs> it yeah, definitely did not. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, this has been, you know, this has been interesting. I'm just, I'm just glad that we have, have finally maybe possibly ended a war. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is another thing, though. So the the other, uh, of course, the other complaint um, about this is how disorganized the withdrawal has been that, you know, has left all these people stranded and, and so on. Yeah, um, but how do you really, I mean, not saying we couldn't have done it better because I believe we could have, mm -hmm. but there's no perfect exit strategy. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I don't think that you're being jaded enough here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually think that uh, absolutely it could have been done better yeah. and that it was intentionally done poorly. Oh, I, well, that's, I think that's, um, that I the, that. I think that the Pentagon, you know, the people at the Pentagon, um, they managed to drag their feet during Trump's presidency and not, yeah. um, not really make any movements to get people out of there. And I think that they thought that they could continue doing that to Biden and that Biden would eventually fold and let them stay. Yeah. And I think so they had all this extra time that they could have organized a withdrawal. And I think that they didn't use it. 
Yeah. I think that they didn't prepare for a real draw because they always thought that they wouldn't have to. Oh, that's actually a good point. I hadn't really considered that. I mean, given everything we know that went on during the Trump years as far as trying to leave and not and it not happening, yeah. they probably and looking at Biden, I mean, you just look at Biden like, yeah, this guy doesn't this guy can say whatever he wants, but <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's what I, I don't blame Biden for this. I blame the Pentagon. Yeah. And I think that's where I mean ultimately that's where that's where the the chips should fall anyway mm-hmm. because it's the, I they're mean, the ones that lost the war. Well, not only are they <laughs> the ones that lost the war, like this is kind of what they do. Like mm-hmm. I don't I don't expect to see Biden in there like with a map telling them what to do where. Right. Like that's not Biden's job. Biden's job. Well, it kind of is actually. He's well, the commander in chief. He's commander in chief, but yeah, mm-hmm. he's not like the. I mean, I don't expect he, the president. He's no Napoleon, though. I yeah. Think. Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like so. Um, no, I, I think that they, you know, this is the people that we never seem to blame. Yeah. Um, and it, it's always it. You know, it's the same thing that you hear for every government program that fails. Yeah. Is that well, we just didn't give it enough money yep. or enough time or enough attention or whatever yeah the Um, failing up (laughs) yeah but the the truth is that um obama didn't give them all the troops that they wanted but he did give a big surge in afghanistan yeah um that uh trump didn't do everything that they wanted but he stepped up the air war and he gave the generals free hands to kind of do as they pleased in terms of their maneuvers and and uh so forth yeah um so the military has been given really every opportunity yeah. to, 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 to win turn this things war. This, yeah, to turn this around. It yeah. was just unwinnable. Yeah. And they didn't recognize that. And they weren't willing to turn off the spigot because the truth is that all these, especially these, um, these high-level officers, they benefit tremendously from war. Oh, absolutely. That's their best chance of moving up in the ranks is war. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, when they're done with their military stuff, um, and they take their nice fat pension from the government and they go work as a, uh, as a consultant for, um, the military industrial complex and make a bunch of money there. And they have all those connections and that's what it's really about in the end. I think, um, I mean, could we have won a war in Afghanistan? I honestly don't believe that we could, but even assuming that we could, I don't think that we ever intended to. You don't think we'd want to? Yeah. yeah I think that the whole purpose really was well, to privatize public funds i think i think yeah. they had what they wanted i mean we had mm-hmm. pretty well control over the country mm-hmm. but we, it, as soon as we left it was going to tumble so that was the whole idea is we just well, we, we never just, had we control just of the country never leave yeah no we never I mean, had control of the country taliban was making gains with the u.s still there were they really yeah, yeah. um well then there you go <laughs> you know they it, the people were not for the most part, on the side of the Allied troops fighting yeah. against the Taliban. Yeah. They're, you know, and it, I, I guess probably proof enough is just how quickly the, these, um, oh, yeah, the they, Afghan they, National Army folded. Yeah. They just, like, turned around and gave up. They weren't willing to, they were fighting for coin. They were no better than mercenaries. Yeah. They were getting paid really well by the U.S. government. Yeah which is us, the yeah. taxpayer. Yeah. They were getting paid really well by the U.S. taxpayer to carry a rifle around yeah. um, and get three squares and, you know, et cetera. Yeah. And um, as soon as that um, that paycheck ended, they didn't have any real loyalty to the Afghan government. Yeah. Um, they were just they were just collecting a paycheck. Well, and, they knew- and they probably have a lot of sympathies for the Taliban. I mean, this yeah. is uh, a Muslim country that probably, that is... Certainly behind the times, comparatively speaking. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely agree with that. And they, they knew the same thing we've been saying forever mm-hmm. is like, once the Americans leave, the Taliban's taken back over. Yeah. Like, I mean, and you had all the blue another. on green um, attacks, the, yeah. you know, the, the police forces that we were training, the National Army forces that we were training. That's odd. I'm going to go answer that. All right. Get your gun ready. Okay. Well, that that's gonna kind of break our, <laughs> our <laughs> rhythm. I don't get a lot of door to door salesmen here. That was that was kind of odd. Uh, Thought about shooting him just cause. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, I was prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> um, let's see. Where were we? Uh, we're talking Afghan about Afghan National Army folding, uh, blue on green attacks, um, etc. Yeah, the uh, uh, when in the end when it 
came down to it, they just weren't they just weren't into it. Yeah. We were fighting for them and they weren't willing to fight for themselves. So Yeah. Like, well and it makes sense for them. Like they don't want to fight the I mean it's if the Americans come in, you've got a choice. You fight the Americans or you fight for the Americans. Mm-hmm. Which one are you gonna choose? Yeah. <laughs> like Well apparently it's about fifty fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well I mean <laughs> if you're not like part of the like hiding yeah. in the woods, <laughs> you know. I mean, I, I think that the, the U.S. was trying to take advantage of um, trying to put together a coalition of a bunch of minority ethnic groups. Yeah. Um, Uzbeks, Tajiks, et cetera, et cetera. Like all these groups against the the plurality Pashtun. Mm-hmm. Um, and the truth is that those all those groups, like they're not really friends with each other anyway. Yeah, yeah. So why would they you know, stay with, with some American support? Okay, we'll fight against the Pashtuns. Maybe we can we can you know reduce their influence in the country. But yeah. left to their own devices, I, I don't think that they really they're not ally. They're, yeah, they're not they're, natural allies. I guess that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. So uh, and uh, graveyard of empires, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's just it. At least we're getting out. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's. Well, and then the the drawback to that uh, concern um, that we've expressed a couple of times on this podcast now is that yeah we're we're getting we're leaving Afghanistan, but um, of course the the big talk is then so that we can shift our focus to China and Russia. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want those wars either. Right. <laughs> um, but those are those are even better for the military industrial complex because those are big ticket items. Are, you can you can get big ticket items to fight Russia and China. Yeah. Like imagine what kind of spending the Navy can suck out of uh, you know um, fear mongering about a war with China. Yeah, <laughs> which is just as dangerous as you can get right there. Yeah, yeah. and there's no sense in it. Um, I mean, I I have said for a long time that I'm not worried about China. Yeah, China doesn't scare me. Yeah. Um. It, Part of it is that the that that the U.S. government or people in power have settled into this idea of a monopolar world, and they want to keep it that way. Yeah, where the U.S. is the only superpower, but it just can't be maintained, um, and it probably shouldn't be. Well, uh, and going back to to the low cost of staying in Afghanistan, mm-hmm. like that's not so. That's not what we want our country to be. Is mm-hmm. like. Occupying Afghanistan, occupying Iraq, occupying wherever, like Somalia. Somalia, yeah. yeah. I mean, go start running down the list. I mean, that's that is an empire, and that's not. I mean, we joke about the empire all the time, but it's not really a joke. Like we are an empire, and that is a problem. Like we don't mm-hmm. need to be that. Yeah. Um, and so the anybody that's arguing to stay in Afghanistan is arguing for an empire. Yeah. Um, she goes not abroad in search of monsters to destroy. Exactly. Exactly. Uh-huh. And yeah, it, it certainly, it, there's always going to be um, people lobbying for military action because it enriches a subset of the population. Yeah. But yeah. it impoverishes all the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, every yeah. dollar that's spent on military contractors is a dollar that's that you don't get to keep. <laughs> Quit blowing up my health care money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I, so, and this goes into, you know, what would you rather have um, yeah. kind of thing. Like, um, you know, we, um, oh gosh, now I can't think of her name. Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. yeah. I, like, I, you and I both um, offered some support to Tulsi Gabbard. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I would have been really happy to see her as a nominee. Um, if she had been the nominee, I probably would have voted for her. There's a strong chance. Um, I won't, I can't, don't live in that world, so don't know. But mm-hmm. there's a strong chance I would have, even though mm-hmm. I disagree with her on a host of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think her economics is terrible. But at least what she was talking about doing to to fund her terrible economics was stopping all the wars. Yeah. All right, well, let's stop funding all these wars and use that money to do all these other things instead. Yeah. Well, I mean, given the choice, at least that's moving in the right direction. At I'm least, not thrilled with, uh, you know, the $15 minimum wage or, you know, mm-hmm. funding all this welfare all over the place, but I'm 
I, I have less of a problem with that than funding the military. At least that all money, over the place. At least that money's being spent at home. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least it's being spent on our own citizens, right? Because right now that money's being spent to blow up citizens of other countries. Yeah, or, and I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, or just fuel corruption. Well, that too, um, yeah. and, and that's a huge part of it. it uh, I don't know if you remember when the Afghanistan papers came out at the with the Washington Post a couple of years ago, I guess now, a um, year ago. Anyway, whenever that was, uh, one of the stories in there, um, I think it was from that, um, anyway, was uh, this guy uh, saying that he had been obligated to give out millions of dollars a day in this little village. Yep. And that some senator or representative had come and visited from, I, I want to say Texas. So I'm going to start filling in names, even if they're not right, because yeah. you know this may not be exact. But this is essentially the story. Yeah. Um, you know, some representative from Texas comes in, and he's talking to this guy who, working for the U.S. military, is giving out millions of dollars um, in this little village in Afghanistan for various projects. Yeah. And he asks the representative, "Could you responsibly spend that kind of money?" Um, in your own district. And the guy says, hell no. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, well, yeah, so here I am. I've been obligated to spend, you know, $3 million a day in this village that still ha has mud huts with no windows. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, what it's am just, I supposed to do with this? Yeah. So the only thing that, the only thing that it can really do feasibly do is fuel corruption. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Um, and then, of course, there were tons of stories about ghost soldiers. Uh, Biden keeps saying um, Afghan National Army had 300,000 uh, soldiers in it. Um, realistic estimates from what I've heard are more like 200, 225,000. And the rest were just soldiers that were on the books so that the officers could collect their paychecks. Yeah, right. <laughs> A way to funnel money, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the U.S. was spending billions of dollars there. Yeah. yeah. And there's no way to track that. I mean, you have your bureaucracy, but I mean, stuff like what you're talking mm -hmm. about with the ghost soldiers, like that's going to happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. you can't really stop it when you've got that much of a, of a flow coming through, mm -hmm. you know. So hopefully we can hire our own ghost soldier, ghost soldiers here now. Yeah. All right. And, uh, <laughs> well, know, to run the Liberty Mike, uh, I have this editor. I, I would, so I wish the government would give me millions of dollars to, you know, <laughs> do what I needed with it. All right. Yeah. Have all kinds of stuff. Mm. Well, I'll tell you my biggest fear with the war coming to the end is now the terror war is going to move in inward. Well, it already has. Though. It, it already has, but the, the worry that that's going to keep continue to intensify. Mm. That's, that's my fear. Um, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because while all this is happening, um, the Department of Homeland Security put out a paper saying that the biggest terror threat in the U.S. was uh, from domestic violent extremists, yeah. um, essentially. And they, you know, they mentioned uh, a couple of factors that were going into the, they mentioned the COVID regimes, you know, the various lockdown measures and so forth. Um, the, uh, you know, the people that believe that the election was a fraud and, and still want to, um, put Donald Trump back Reinstate in power, Donald Trump, yeah. um, and, uh, you know, religious holidays and nine 11, uh, anniversary coming up and so forth. But with us withdrawing from Afghanistan and all this talk about what a danger it is and how we're going to, you know, create another opportunity for terrorists to take root in Afghanistan, which, you know. We, we've we created more opportunities for terrorists to take root in failed states that we caused to fail than anything else anyway. It's, it's self-defeating as far as I'm concerned. But um, anyway, with all that going on, the Department of Homeland Security says that the biggest threat to national security is, um, is you know, white supremacist groups or um, people that are opposed to being locked in their houses um, or forced to take a vaccine. <laughs> Imagine um, that. Like, when you start oppressing people, they start to become violent. Yeah. Like, imagine that. But like, but think that, that with all this going on and 9-11 coming up, that the greatest yeah. threat is that not Islamic extremism. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I think that they're, you know, they're creating their own narrative against their narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Like we, why, why do we need to stay in Afghanistan and spend all this money and billions of dollars when apparently they're not even a threat? Like, I mean, they're, or they're barely a threat. Yeah. 
Um, but you're right. The danger there is that now what you've done is you've created a threat out of political dissidents. Yeah. Um, and, and that's really unfortunate since the whole point of this country was to have political debate, um, and discussion and people to kind of choose their own paths and, and so forth. And, um, and now the government is trying to fight against that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I, I don't like the road we're heading down. (laughs) No, me neither. Um, I mean, the only way to stop, uh, the only way to stop the momentum is to stop. Yeah. Like you just, everybody needs to recognize and stop complying and even, you know, do, do what you think is best for you, but definitely don't comply just because it's easier. Yeah. Well, and I think that's where a lot of people are at right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just easier to just get the vaccine and be done with it, you know? Yeah. Even though it's not going to be that easy because now they're going to be pushing boosters and the whole nine nine yards. Yeah. That's so this is another thing. Like, for those of you following the science out there, yeah. um, please answer this question for me. Michael at the Liberty Mike. That's that's my email address. Yeah. You can send it to me there. You can reply on Facebook, private message, whatever. Um, this is what I don't understand. Uh, do you remember when these vaccines came out and we were getting all these reports? This one's 92% efficacy, 94% efficacy, 96% efficacy. Yeah. These things are great. They stop everything. What what happened to that? Yeah, <laughs> I guess it wears off. <laughs> I mean, is that the argument? I'm, yeah. uh, I'm assuming so, that's the argument. So now we now we need a third. They're not even called the third one a booster. Yeah, <laughs> they're just calling it a third shot, like yeah. your third injection. Like yeah. that that should be part of the main regimen is to yeah. just have three injections. Yeah. Um, they gotta top you off, and then then annual <laughs> boosters or maybe boosters every six months, like a. You know, how effective are these things really? Where did those numbers come from in the first place? And why don't they seem to stand up? Yeah. No, you got me, man. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, the the only, what I've assumed from just what I've heard from the media, which is not a good source, but is that the, it just over time, the, it wears off. Like it's just, it only, you only have protection for so long. Yeah. Um, But that, I just, I don't know, man. I mean, I guess I mean, when you're dealing... I mean, if the mRNA vaccines uh, work by having your body produce this synthetic protein that's the spike, that's like the spike protein, yeah. and then training, the idea is that it trains your body to produce it, or it triggers your body to produce it, and it trains your body to fight against it. Um, why is it less effective against Delta? Yeah. Uh, like, why is the Delta variant um, get through the vaccine? Um, because the defining feature of these coronaviruses is the spike protein. The yeah. Delta has the variant presumably has yeah. the same spike protein. <laughs> Why doesn't it work against that one spike protein? I don't yeah. know. Um, I, I think that there's been, uh, I think a lot of advantage has been taken about general scientific illiteracy in this country that has been propagated by government schooling that doesn't want you to understand things. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've, I, I know I've established a long time ago that school isn't trying to make you smarter. It's trying to make you compliant. <laughs> yeah. Build good citizens, not, yeah. you know, not intelligent problem solvers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, see, that's another one of those things. You just got to stop doing it. Don't send your kids to public school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I ran for a uh, school board here years ago. And when people would start talking to me about it and they would ask me what what I thought they should do about public school, I told them, pull your kids out of public school. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, then why are you running for the school board? Well, I mean, public school is not going anywhere, so I can at least try and... Improve it. And and make some changes that could, Im- yeah, to I mean, make our, it better. On our local level. Um, I mean, that's the best way to make change is at know, the local level. But yeah. what would I do with my kids? I'd... Damn sure wouldn't send them to public school. Yeah. If you can possibly afford to send them to private school, do. Yeah. And you know, that that's just that's just one of those things, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, but this is another one. Like stop being compliant. Yeah. yeah. Or at the very least, if you can't afford private school or you don't have the time or whatever, like talk to your kids at home. Yeah. Be involved. Yeah. I mean, teach yeah. them um to be skeptical. God, this is so important. And, yeah. and it's, and it's 
held up like it's this terrible vice now to be skeptical. Yeah. Um, well, and a, a lot of this misinformation that you hear out there is not really even so much misinformation. It's just people that are skeptical of the narrative. Mm -hmm. But that is flat. Even just being skeptical is misinformation now. Yeah. Um, which is just insanity to me. Like, you can't even question it now. Like, it's mm -hmm. just you have to take everything for, you know. We're telling you the truth. Yeah. Like, even though your track record is horrible as the meat for the media, yeah. like it's still like you go against the narrative misinformation. And that's the foundation of science is asking questions. Yeah. It, it's, it's not, I, I sound like a broken record. I know, but yeah. science is not a collection of facts. Yeah. <laughs> it never has been. It's not a collection of facts. It's a, it's a process through which you try to eliminate bias and eliminate ideas that don't fit with observation. Yeah. yeah. That's really it. I mean, it's not it's not even about finding the right answer. It's about eliminating the wrong answers. Yeah. Figuring so, out and what's find not, out what's left. Yeah. Yeah. And then you work within that framework. Um you know, the I, I had a discussion with a guy at my office years ago and, a, about this very thing. I was like, science doesn't prove anything. Yeah. Science just fails to disprove. Yeah. As, if it, lo it fails to disprove long enough, it becomes a law. But a law is not something that can't be broken. A law just means that we haven't found anything contrary yet. Yeah. I said, you know, the biggest and it example doesn't mean of that. We're not looking. <laughs> yeah. And I said, the biggest example of this right now is gravity. Yeah. We talk about the law of gravity, but the law of gravity is under attack right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and he was like, no, that's ridiculous. And then like, a couple hours later, he stuck his head in my office. He's like, okay, I've been doing some reading. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out gravity is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, not, exactly. So I mean, it's definitely holding me down, but there's a lot of questions to why. <laughs> yeah. Is it holding you down? No, no. It's just the earth that's holding you up. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> You're falling the whole yeah. time. Um anyway, it, of course the, you know, the the big not to get too deep in the weeds in this. The big challenge to gravity is the, yeah. you know, the old Newtonian stuff just doesn't work for everything. It doesn't work on a really small scale. So, uh, quantum mechanics kind of interfered with um, our understanding of gravity a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, oh. they're, they're trying to find an answer that fits in with that the fits in with quantum, quantum theory too. Yeah. yeah. I gotcha. So, um, I mean, I don't know. I don't really have much more to say about this except that I, I'm proud of Joe Biden for actually successfully, at least so far ending a war. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially a stupid one that hasn't had any, even like close to a reasonable reason to be fought since Osama bin Laden was killed in the neighboring country. <laughs> yeah, not even in Pakistan. Yeah, <laughs> years ago. So, and that was our reason for going there in the first place. That was, that was the reason. So, yay, it's over. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> well, yeah. I hope I'm, so. I'm trying to be positive about this. Yeah. It's cautious optimism. I am optimistic. I don't. I. I think if if we tried to even once we get nice and pulled out, mm -hmm. that if we tried to go back in, that the 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 public outcry will be so heavy. I just can't see yeah. us going back in. Well, I mean, here's the thing, though, and this is one of the things I was talking with um, a veteran about the other day. Is that like many years ago, people stopped caring about this. Yeah. No, it's like true. the general public in this country just doesn't care about this. Yeah. Well, the general public is against it, but they don't care enough to do anything. Right. You know, um, same difference. Yeah, it is. It is the same difference. Mm -hmm. But I think that now that we're out, if we were going back in it, I think it's just going to be a hard sell, man. Yeah. I mean, it, it would it would take something like a 9-11 event to pull us up. <laughs> Don't give in. them any ideas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as Even as I was saying it, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> the, the other day, after the Biden speech, actually, I thought, all right, well, cue the false flag attack. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, but man. hopefully not. And, um, and we yeah. can finally, yeah, yeah, finally put a stop to this. So I'm proud of him. If he, if he holds, you know, if he stays the course... Like he seems to. I mean, it does seem like he's dug in his heels about this. Yeah. And um, and so I'm 
I, I hope that he has the fortitude to see it through to the end. Yeah. And like I said, said earlier, I'm curious to see what Afghanistan looks like five years from now. Mm-hmm. The, what what kind of, how much of an impact, because you're not going to really know what our impact there was for about five years. Yeah. I mean, obviously the Taliban's taken back over and whatnot, but mm-hmm. like, how are they going to act once we're not there? You know, it's yeah. going to take a little time to see. Mm-hmm. Um because you know, t- I mean, we we've had an impact on that society. We were, we've ruled over Definitely. it for twenty years, <laughs> yeah. in one form or another. Yeah, like enforced uh, democracy and capitalism. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of curious to see how they end up interacting with other nations. Yeah. That's yeah. uh, I, I'm curious how the diplomacy of the Taliban works. Yeah. Um. So far, they've been very diplomatic. They, it's gonna, but uh, it, they've historically of, been very insular. So I'm yeah, no, yeah. But to me, none of this that's going on right now counts for anything. Like they can say whatever they want. Yeah. What matters is what happens a couple of years from now down the road. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's where the that's the reality, you know. Yeah. So well, the the funny thing is that uh, whatever is happening um, five years from now, if Afghanistan is is a disaster. It's the Taliban's fault. Yep. And if Afghanistan is thriving, it's because of the U.S. presence it's over because, all that time. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> make your own judgment on that. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, you ready to wrap it up? I think so. Okay. Uh. Well. So next episode is the hundredth episode, right? I believe it is. Yeah. We haven't made plants. <laughs> we haven't. Yeah, we have a week. Yeah. It's because I always, like, I don't even pay attention to the number until I'm numbering it for <laughs> yeah. to put up. But, I, yeah, I think this is 99. This should be 99 if I'm not mistaken. All right. Well, again, email address is Michael at the Liberty Mike. Uh, if anybody has any ideas how we can celebrate the 100th episode. Um, it's a milestone. Yeah. Let me know. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, uh, you can PM me or um, Liberty Larry on Facebook um, or just the page, I guess. I don't know how that works exactly, but... I think it sends it to the page, but I'll be the one that sees it. Okay. (laughs) Because you won't be on the page. That's true. (laughs) Um, And then maybe I just, like, message you, hey, somebody posted on the page, you need to talk to them. (laughs) Yeah. I'll (laughs) be on the page in about 10 minutes for about three minutes. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) And that'll be it till next week. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) If I don't tell you to get on there. (laughs) That's true. That's true. So, so yeah. uh, Join us again in about a week. Um, when finally on our hundredth episode, we get this right. Yeah. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later. Essentially, I tried to tell the story that they didn't have to invade Afghanistan after September 11th, that Mullah Omar and the Taliban leadership hated Osama bin Laden's guts and they were more than happy to turn him over. All they needed was to save a little face. And George Bush said, no negotiations. We will not talk to you. We will accept your unconditional surrender and your handover of these guys. And the Taliban said, look, man, give us a way to save a little face here, pal. And Bush said, no, because he wanted to attack. He wanted, and, and there were multiple offers. They started off saying, well, first prove he did it and we'll hand him over. And then they said, no, we're not going to prove anything to you. We don't have to. We made our demands. You're going to do what we said. So then they said, and, and that one was, give us some proof and we'll turn him over to another Muslim country. That was the first one. Then it was, okay, if you could prove it, we'll turn him over to Pakistan. And then obviously that's the same thing as turning him over to the Americans anyway, right? The same thing with turning him over to any Muslim country means Egypt or anywhere that would have renditioned him right to the U.S. or right to the deepest dungeon or whatever, um, any American public state. Then once the bombs started falling, it's true, this is after the bombs started falling in the beginning of October, like October 8th, they said, okay, we'll turn him over to any country in the world other than the United States and with no demand for evidence of his guilt whatsoever. And Bush said, no, fuck you, that's it, and kept the bombing going, kept the war going. And then, and then when they started the war, the first thing they did was go and attack the Taliban and all the Taliban positions in the north for the benefit of the Northern Alliance, while Osama bin Laden and all his friends were escaping from the Nangarhar province in the far east of the country. And 
you know, I make the case in the book, and I think it's pretty clear that they deliberately decided to let Bin Laden go so that they would have that enemy out there, that they would rather have the enemy live so that they could keep people's moms scared and keep everybody, get everybody, you know, keep them upset and have ready the, for, the the next war. for the next war. Yep. Yeah. And, um, and then, so then I argue that, okay, look, even if you say, I don't want Bin Laden on trial, I wanted some carpet bombing. I was so mad about 9-11, I want Al-Qaeda dead. Then I argue, okay, but you didn't have to attack the Taliban. The Taliban would have just stood out of the way. We didn't have to have a regime change in Kabul. We didn't have to take the side of the Northern Alliance. They, could have, they already had enough Rangers and Delta guys on the ground, and CIA special operator, uh, uh, special action team guys, whatever, on the ground. That, uh, and the Taliban had already made it clear that at that point they were just going to stand back. They were going to help Osama. If America was just targeting Osama, they weren't going to do anything. And in fact, in the book, I talk about uh, how one Taliban commander on the Shamali plane was surrendering to an American CIA officer who was just calling in airstrikes. He didn't even have foot soldiers. He was just calling in airstrikes. And the uh, uh, battalion or whatever division of Taliban were surrendering. And the commander was surrendering. And he said, so what are your demands? And the Americans said, if you have any Arabs with you, kill them. And the guy says, hang on. And you hear, pow, 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 pow. In the back, that's it. The Taliban took all the Arabs, fighters that were with them, put them up against the wall and executed them. And said, okay, I did what you wanted. I'm ready to turn over my local guys to, you know, surrender. So they were perfectly willing to sacrifice Al-Qaeda. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, Bush and them at the time, if you remember at the time, they did everything in the world to make you confuse the two. And, oh, yeah. and so yeah, that you would not that, understand yeah. that. Al-Qaeda is this band of pirates, this group of outlaws, mostly exiled from Egypt and Saudi Arabia, which is far from Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And they're hiding out here and they're imposing themselves essentially on the local government there, which has let them stay. But, boy, even to explain it that far, and you see the opportunity for negotiation right there. Mm -hmm. How can I divide this group of criminals away from the leaders of the state where they live. But that wasn't the answers that they were, that wasn't the question they were asking or the answers that they wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. So then I argue, okay, even if you say, yeah, but you know what, the Taliban let Osama live there since 1996. So I say bomb them too, I don't give a damn because that's how mad I am about 9-11. Then I say, okay, fine. Even if you think that, that still doesn't mean that you have to install a new government in power and swear that all its enemies are your enemies until the end of time. And in fact, in this situation, take the side of a coalition of small minority groups, 10 and 20 percent of the population each, against the plurality, 40 percent of the population, the Pashtuns, who are mountain men with rifles, who like to fight, and who will not give up, and they never have. I mean, when Tamer Lane came through there, they fought him. Mm -hmm. You know, they fought everyone. And they made it clear this whole time. And it's been obvious this whole time. And not just to say, I told you so, because uh, look at how great I am. But that anyone who was being honest about this and critical about this, like myself, could have told you in September of 2001, America is going to lose the Afghan war. It's a country the size of Texas, which is huge. It is. From the middle of Texas to El Paso, from Austin to El Paso, is halfway to California. That's just half of Texas. It's halfway to California. That's how big Texas is. That's why they say everything big in Texas. It actually is because big it. as like five of the other neighboring states. Okay? Yeah. It's friggin' huge. That's how big Afghanistan is. And it has mountains like Colorado and deserts like California and Arizona. It's completely landlocked. You, you can't get there from the sea at all. And in fact, there's only one country, Pakistan, between Afghanistan and the sea. But guess what? There's a mountain range between Afghanistan and Pakistan. So to even get your trucks from your boat into Afghanistan means you have to go all the way up into the Khyber Pass and back down again. Okay? I said so in September 2001. America will lose this war. Simple as that. Yeah. And, and a lot of other people did too. Yeah. This yeah. is the dumbest thing in the world to do. It'd be, you know what? The Afghans would be just as smart to try to invade and take Texas away from me. <laughs> it's not going to happen.